everyone, I'm Kelly Sacco and welcome to The Wheelhouse. Joining us today to preview the Ford EcoBoost 400 is Shannon Spake, co-host of NASCAR Race Hub on Fox Sports 1. Shannon, thanks so much for joining us. No problem, Kelly. Thank you for having me. All right, Shannon, let's get right to it. Martin Truex Jr. has had a dominant season, leading the series with seven wins and 18 top five finishes. However, entering the year, it was a different story. He had a career total of seven wins and never had more than eight top five finishes in a given season. What has been the difference this year? Um, I think just another year with that team, they are really rolling. And I think that's a question really everyone's been asking all year. Like, what is the 78 figured out? that nobody else has been able to figure out because most of the season, as you just mentioned, he has been just uh, the class of the field. I mean, just basically outperforming everyone every single week on that racetrack. It's allowed him to, I mean, it hasn't been, it hasn't been without issues. That team has had problems. They've had issues on pit road. They, they've made mistakes, but because the speed has been so incredible in that 78, they've been able to overcome everything. Uh, you know, they, they do say some, some of the team members and, and even the guys in the 78 team, they credit being out in the Denver area, which is a lot different for a lot of race teams. Almost all of the race teams are located here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And while some might think that the proximity uh, from the racetrack and getting to the racetrack each week could actually be a burden on that team, some of those team members and, and some of the guys in, on other crews say that that could actually be a good thing because those guys are so isolated. They can kind of keep all their secrets to themselves. They are out there on an island, and some say that could be one of the reasons that they have been able to be so good this season. And for that success to continue and for them to win the title, Truex will have to finish ahead of three former series champions in Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Brad Kozlowski. Which driver do you think has the best chance of upsetting Truex's storybook season and claiming a second title? Kelly, I could sit here and run down each of those drivers that you just mentioned and tell you exactly why they could win the championship. That is how good this field is going into to the Miami race. Now, you look at Brad Keselowski, let's take him first. He hasn't had the speed all season long that some of those other guys have had or or especially even in the last couple races. You look at how he finished at Phoenix. It was a wasn't a top 10. He was outside the top 10, did what he needed to do. But when you look at that two team, they are the, one of the best at strategy and one of the best at fuel mileage. So if either of those things are are a part of this race in any way shape or form, which they probably will be you know you got to look at the two Kyle Busch he's one of those guys he is so tremendously talented it, it, probably one of the most talented drivers in the garage if you give him a car that is just just uh, it, it, if it's got the speed that he needs he can put that car in places that he needs to put it Kevin Harvick when you look at the speed that they've been able to create over the last 10 races most of the season, you kind of asked where the Fords and particularly Stuart Haas Racing, where they were. And, and, and I think most people didn't think that they would be part of the, the, the championship talk. But in the, in the playoffs, when it is counted, they have turned on something and, and really picked it up. And in terms of the speed they have it, and if there is a driver in this Final Four that has the mental strength, of Kevin Harvick, you'd have to show me who it was. That guy is so mentally strong and and has been through almost anything. So, so I would certainly look to him as being one of the favorites in terms of speed and mental strength. And then there's Martin Truex Jr. See, it's a lot like college basketball in this format going into Miami. It, it's a it's a one game elimination. And I covered the Kentucky Wildcats when they went 38 and one that one season when everyone thought that they were going to go 40 and 0, and they lost a the game. It's just one game. And you lose it, and you're done. And that's how it is at Miami. Anything can happen. We talk about it in racing all the time. It could be a, a five dollar uh, a part that goes bad on that on that car, and and hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully we have all four of those guys come into the the final restart, one, two, three, and four, and racing for the the championship in Miami. Well, like you said, that's what makes racing exciting. Anything could happen, and we're going to find out here in just a few days in Homestead. Well, this year's race at Homestead is also notable for possibly being the final cup race for several fan favorites. Let's start with last week's winner, Matt Kenseth. And somewhat of a late-season surprise, we learned that Kenseth will not pursue a ride for 2018. Do you think we'll ever see him in a full-time NASCAR ride again? It's going to be tough because the really good rides, are few and far between, and, and they're taken. And I don't see Matt Kenseth going out there and, and getting in a car that's not going to run up front. He's capable of doing it. He's proven it this past weekend. He's proven it all season. Uh, this is a guy who made the playoffs. He's a champion. He wins races. And so I don't see him going and, and getting in one of the backmarker cars. 
could I see him if, if someone needed to get out of the race car at some point? If for some reason um, there was uh, an injury or something happened, I could see him playing the role like a Jeff Gordon did a couple of years ago and him being the first guy uh, on, somebody's, on somebody's speed dial. But if there's not a quality ride, I don't think Matt Kenseth is going to take it. Let's move on to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Despite never claiming a cup title, he's arguably the sport's biggest draw and a fan favorite. How much will NASCAR miss not having him on the track? Oh, my goodness. It's like um, he's, he's the guy. You know, ever since we lost his dad, Dale Earnhardt, uh, in the Daytona 500, almost you know years ago, he, he, he is the guy that has taken on that fan base. He is the guy that everybody looks to. He's the face of our sport, and he's going to be incredibly missed out on that racetrack and in those drivers' meetings and in the garage. Uh, fortunately, we'll have him in the broadcast booth. He's going to be with NBC next season, and so you're still going to have Dale Jr. a part of this sport, which I don't think – I don't think – I think it would be really hard to see the sport without an Earnhardt, and um, he's going to absolutely be missed, but he will be up in that booth, and it's been such a good season. He, he's – He's changed so much um, over the years, and if, if you ever have a chance to listen in on his radio or listen to some of his interviews, the Dale Earnhardt Jr. that you guys get right now is, is funny, is witty, and he's, he really kind of lets it all out there. You really get to know him now, whereas in years past, just because he lived under the microscope that he lived under, um, I felt like he was a lot more reserved, and now he's just kind of all out there. He's a lot of fun. Shannon, no doubt he's done so many great things for the sport. Who do you think will assume the mantle as the sport's most popular driver? It's, 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 I mean, right now it's looking like Chase Elliott's the guy. In the last couple races, you know, after what happened at Dover, him almost winning that race, and then Martinsville to contact with Denny Hamlin, and then this past weekend at Phoenix again with Denny Hamlin, the fans really seem to be gravitating uh, towards Chase Elliott. Uh, he'll be driving the nine next year, which was his dad's number, and Bill Elliott was the was the, the sport's most popular driver for many years. Um, I like Ryan Blaney, too. I think, you know, he's a, he's a generational driver. His dad used to drive, and, and he's got quite the little personality. He has a podcast that he does, so people can get to know him a little bit. Uh, but I think, I think the, the sport, it, we're starting to see the evolution of some of those younger drivers who are stepping into those roles. And I think even coming into this year, as, as early as this year, we question who those guys would be, who the drivers the next guys would be that would step up and step into those shoes. And I do think we're starting to see that, particularly with the Elliots and, and the Blaney. Well, whoever that's going to be, they definitely have some very big shoes to fill, yeah. Shannon. Uh, before we let you go, it's a homecoming for you. You're a graduate of Florida Atlantic. How about them Owls in their first season under Lane Kiffin? Absolutely. I actually just got a care package last night uh, from the AD over there at Florida Atlantic. Every once in a while, he'll send me some shirts and some hats and stuff. Uh, I'm a proud alum. My mom actually graduated from Florida Atlantic as well. I've been down there to talk to the student athletes um, from time to time. And yeah, I, I, I had the opportunity to meet Lane when he, when he was the offensive coordinator at Alabama. I covered a couple of his games. And so when they made that hire, I, was, I, I, I knew not only him, but with Kendall Bryles and the offense that Kendall used to have at Baylor, you knew that, that they were going to put up some points and, and Lane could get that moving in the right direction in terms of recruiting and, and just playing out coaching those guys. So I'm excited to see that. And this will be my first. I'm actually going to be working the Miami Dolphin game this week. And um, it's the rescheduled Tampa at Miami game from uh, week one when Hurricane Irma came through there. Uh, and, and obviously the smart thing for them to do at that time was to, was to postpone that game. But this will be the first time that I'm actually covering the Miami Dolphins. I've been down there for the Miami Hurricanes a couple of times at Hard Rock Stadium, but I've never had an opportunity to cover the Miami Dolphins. And, and I grew up a, a Dolphins fan. My, my family, they're, they're still fans of the Dolphins. And um, I'm excited to be down there for that game as well. So you're going to be covering that game. Uh, what Dolphins preview can you give to us before you go? Um, well, I'm, I'm hoping that the same team that was up here, because I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm hoping the same team that was here Monday night in Charlotte, North Carolina, does not show up this weekend, Sunday, um, <laughs> because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah sure we, we know. know Very exactly different team than you have. Yes. Um, so I, I'm sure Adam Gates is going to have those boys in practice this week, uh, getting, you know, getting things kind of firmed up. Uh, you know, on the, on the flip side, Tampa Bay is coming in, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit uh, – battered as well you know without Jameis Winston Mike Evans is coming off that one week suspension and certainly Tampa hasn't been performing to the level that they thought that they would perform when the season starts you think about where this game 
it was and, and the two teams that you were looking at week one coming into the season. And now you look at the two teams that are going to be on that field this weekend. And, and I think we can all say that they're very different than what we thought that they would be at the beginning of the year. Shannon, thanks so much again for joining us. That was Shannon Spake. She's got NASCAR. She's got football. She's got it all. Co-host of NASCAR Race Hub on Fox Sports 1. I'm Kelly Sacco. That'll do it for this week's edition of The Wheelhouse. We'll see you next time.